We have a Ram Promaster 2019-2500, and I am currently wiring up our 60 amp energy DC to DC or battery to battery charger. We have our actual system, the appliance, back where all of our batteries are, and we've run four aug wire from the back all the way to the front of the van. It goes under the seat, through the wall and the ceiling, and all the way to the back. I have my both my positive and my negative terminal hanging out back there, and my D plus wire, which does not come with it. You have to buy your own, so go to AutoZone and get yourself a copper wire. This is, I think, 16 gauge this guy here you have to take off this floor mat here which is a little bit of a pain because it like fits in with all these funny little whatever you call it you have to take off this guy and here this is already attached to your positive battery terminal and this is the positive battery terminal that is going to sit right on top unfortunately though this does not fit back on top because originally this was flat so i am just going to break off this little piece and sand it down so i broke this bad boy off that was actually really easy and this guy just sits right back on clicks back into place and that's it so that was the positive terminal positive terminal has to go first per the red edgy manual now what we're going to do is the negative terminals i'm just using a an adjustable socket wrench going to spin that little bolt off so here we are over on the negative side so positive side negative side over here there is a little negative bus bar what i'm going to do is just stick our negative on top of this terminal here i used a i think this is a 10 millimeter socket I'm gonna get my negative. Obviously remember, never touch the negatives and the positives. My negative's on. So hand tightening from there. And I have not done anything special to the battery at all. I didn't disconnect it or anything like that. But I am connecting these before I connect these wires to the actual thing. Nice, nice and tight. I'll probably put some conduit slash loom around them and we'll go from there. I realized once I was trying to put on the actual top here that this conduit did not fit nicely under this thing. I thought it would smush down better, but it does not. So what I did was I took the biggest drill bit, which I think is half an inch, and I put two holes for the conduit to go through and the wire to go through. Um, I did definitely have to drill out those holes bigger than half an inch. But then you have to pull them through and then wire them, uh, positive before negative. Anyway, so hopefully we'll be able to put these down nicely. I am gonna try to figure out how to deal with our D plus wire. My dumbass got one that is probably, I'd say 10 inches short. But luckily I do have some wire that I'll probably just go ahead and splice onto it. I have it wired all the way back here. I put in a little piece of plywood with a switch on it so that if for whatever reason we are driving and we don't want it on, we can just turn it off. And it's run under the seat and then I picked up this guy. It's just a whole bunch of screws. Um, I picked it up. I insulated this wire with just a shit ton of electrical tape so that this doesn't like pinch the wire down or hurt it. Then I'm going to run it up here, up into the fuse panel, and then we're going to half splice it onto something else. So when I took out the fuse from the fuse block, this is what it looks like. And the two fuse taps that I found today that looked even remotely appropriate were this guy. I'm gonna give this one a shot. What we're gonna do is we are going to test the voltage of these fuses right here to see if they're off when the car is off and on when the car is on. So I'm gonna just turn on my multimeter. So you need to have the black, the black lead in the calm area and the red lead um, over here on the right. And then we're just gonna turn it to DC, right? Cause cars run on DC voltage. So I am currently touching these two and I'm getting a reading of zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these into the leads here. Basically what I saw is this negative and then just stick that in there. So I'm getting 12.5 volts. So that is not what we want, right? So let's move over and see if we get it over there. Also 12.5 volts. Okay, also not what we want. Let me try the 7.5 because then I could put in a five if I wanted to. When you do these tap splices, you do have to make sure that um, the fuse that you're putting in is smaller than the fuse that's already there. So I'm going to take out the 7.5 and see if that works. All right, so I am just gonna test this guy again to make sure that, okay, that one, oh, hell yeah. After a lot of testing on this top row here, there is a 7.5 fuse here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show you the little, the little test that I'm about to do. So first I'm gonna take my black lead and I'm just gonna put it on this ground. This is just a bolt, right? Then I'm gonna take my red lead. I'm gonna stick it right in here. And then I should be getting, yeah, so that's negative slash zero right now. So that bad boy is not on when the car's not on. Okay, so now I just turned on the car. I'm going to do that same test. So just bear with me here. Hell yes. That is good. It just read 14. Now, this is my D plus wire that I ran last night, right? This is just hella taped up. All right, I ran it under here, ran it up through here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it up with all these wires and then I'll put this this plastic piece back on and I'll go up into the fuse block. I do have, I believe it's called a tap splice. Fuse tap. Here we go. It's called a fuse tap. Um, it has one of these awesome little crimper guys. So I'm just going to crimp 
this guy out here and then we'll get back to it. I am going to take my 7.5 fuse. This is an ATM fuse, by the way. Um, they're a little bit smaller than the ATC fuses. So I'm gonna take the 7.5 fuse that was originally in there and I'm just gonna stick it into the bottom row, the one that's closer to the prongs, right? So bam, that's in. And now I have to pick a smaller fuse that'll go into this. I'm gonna use a five amp fuse. So that is done. The way that these go in is you have to make sure that this side, so the side that's not attached to the wire, right, um, goes into the, the hot side of your fuse area. And I just checked it, and the bottom side is the side that's the hot side. So when I stuck my multimeter into the top one, the top one didn't give off anything, but the bottom one gave off like 14. So it's going to sit in like this upside down. So I think I'm going to stick some conduit on here. I'm going to run it up through the bottom, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, everybody. So this is what it looks like currently. Earlier in the video, I said that the tap fuse has to be upside down, but turns out it works both ways. So as you can see, our tap fuse is right here. All right, and one last thing I'm gonna show you guys before we show how this works. Again, here's my switch down here. This 100 amp fuse is in the in the positive wire here. Um, I got this fuse holder from Renogy. And these 100 amp fuses, uh, it's an 100 amp ANL fuse I got on Amazon, which I will link below. Here it is, just a, all of our extra fuses. Always make sure to have extras because they will blow on you. And if that fuse blows, your DC to DC won't work. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on the car. And what we're gonna be looking for in the back is a green light on our DC to DC charger. When we see that green light, that means it's working. I'm go ahead and turn on the car. I wanna make sure our switch is on which I just turned on right now. And let's go to the back. If we can get over to the side here, you can see that that green light is on, which means that we are getting power to our batteries. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so that we can get more videos out like this to other people like you.